So welcome to this edition of Smart Levers and today we want to talk about something very different. Today we are going to talk about bursty communication. So what is this bursty communication all about Raman? When you say bursty, I can only think of, you know, something bursting from the seams and I have my cricket ball, it's like, you know, it's right there in front of me. So tell me more about this. Right. So if you're you know, running a cricket team, uh, communication is not happening uh, in the remote sense, right? You're all together. It's all synchronous. But these days, uh, due to the events of the last couple of years, a lot of teams have gone or adopted uh, asynchronous modes of communication. And so they're still working their way through what is effective because earlier you could tap your colleague on the shoulder and interrupt him or her uh, without their permission and ask them for uh, help. And now uh, you're probably, uh, you know, you're doing it in a very different uh, way. So uh, the idea of bursty communication is that you can think of it as somewhere between synchronous and asynchronous. So uh, classically synchronous is where people get together. It doesn't matter if it's in person or in virtual, but your attention is all synchronized at the same time. Whereas asynchronous is you do what you do when you want to do it. And I will do it at, at my own pace and we will have these points or these channels and, or tools that help us synchronize our information and communication. So the, the idea of bursty communication is, is somewhat like this. Uh, let's say you and I wanted to brainstorm over a new compound as part of CTQ compounds that we offer. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I propose something on Asana, which is our internal tool for asynchronous communication and task management. Um, and I propose something, I assign it to you and you look at it the next day and you have a bunch of comments which you uh, leave on it. And then you assign it back to me. We do this a few times and then we realize that we need to sort of put our heads together and quickly bounce off ideas. So this is like going back to your cricket team example. You want to get into a huddle, uh, you know, and, and quickly kind of understand what else can we do. And so we don't want to wait for this slow burn of communication. That phase is over. We have already thought deeply about what we want to do. And now we want to have this rapid fire sort of communication. Uh, and come up with something and make a decision and move forward from there. And it can go back to this more sedate, asynchronous style communication. So that's what bursty communication looks like. Teams come together, they quickly discuss something and they disband. Some teams who do agile and scrum may recognize that they, they try to do this in stand up meetings. Uh, but as people know, uh, you know that, that's part of a larger fabric. So there is some, uh, you know, there's some similarity to that. The core of the idea is that teams that are otherwise asynchronous working independently, they can come together uh, for short bursts of uh, creativity, for, of working very quickly together, maybe decision making as well. And that has been shown to uh, be, you know, help be very, uh, teams be very effective. And in fact, we discovered this concept while reading a little bit of research and also uh, we, we listen to a couple of podcasts on the changing nature of business communication, bursty communication. One of those things you will hear about in the years to come. Right. And, uh, you know, from what I gather, it's not just about, you know, asynchronous communication with meetings, you know, thrown in between. Right. I think they're also talking about certain say times in the, in, in the day when you are available for, you know, synchronous okay. community, the tap on the back, you are available for that. Uh, so companies right. which have probably experimented with this notion of, okay, two to four, everyone is available uh, every day, right? Uh, because that works with, you know, different people's body clocks and, and all of that. Two to four is like the common time that they have found. And uh, which is where you can quickly, you know, exchange thoughts, exchange ideas. That is also in the realm of bursty communication. Is that right? That's right. So uh, the way to think about bursty communication is not that there is a fixed slot every time, every right. day where we come. That's where it differs from the stand up meeting style, uh, you know, uh, communication where that is very fixed. Hmm. But in this case, it is whenever we need it and we feel right. the, the urge that we need to come together and it's going to be the, the sum of those interacting parts is going to yield much larger returns. So. Uh, I remember listening to a podcast episode where uh, the com you know they spoke about uh, how um, you know in the US you have these late night comedy shows, and so teams need to come together 
the the writing team needs to come together to discuss the day's events think about what they can make jokes about uh, and so to do that it's it's going to be hard for them to bounce this off in a very asynchronous manner you need that you know almost concentrated burst of energy and creativity uh, with everyone looking at each other and uh, exchanging ideas building on those ideas in real time uh, and so uh, in in their case their whole i mean the 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 Uh, the jokes really come out of that bursty communication but in transplanted into a company like you said it is that uh, if you you know we recognize the importance of bursty communication uh, we have these periods just like we have periods where you don't want to be disturbed these are periods where you are open for bursty communication you're probably at your most energetic as a, a team uh, you have all the information before that you've thought about something and you come together for that 1 hour or 30 minutes or 15 minutes it just could be different each time uh, and uh, when someone kind of starts that huddle uh, you are up for it and you know that uh, you just need to bring all that energy very quickly and it's not going to be this long drawn out meeting where you are fiddling with your phone your everyone has all hands on uh, deck for that moment right yeah i think the way to look at this is this is not about uh, having a meeting it is about being available uh, you know for that time uh, you do your deep work you know when you are alone and, and you know that that's a separate zone but this is when you are available for uh, you know working together that's, correct that's and you also identified the kinds of things that benefit right. from you you are not doing things like tell me the password for this at that point that is what asynchronous work is for and it is not to go over a document line by line and put give feedback those are the kinds of things asynchronous communication is great for at the same time you have your uh, one on one meetings and your status updates synchronous meetings in your calendar by definition bursty is is a lot more spontaneous is a lot more energetic and it's a lot more context driven right yeah yeah got it so uh, you know how should up levelers be thinking about um, concepts like bursty communication and you know how how can they use an idea like this uh, to improve uh, work and engagement and productivity in their teams yeah so prior to 2020 you know the the whole balance of communication was typically shifted towards synchronous communication and email was a channel for you to do asynchronous communication and post 2020 things have become even if not they maybe they've tilted too much towards asynchronous and people feel that need to come together so uh, you know think of bursty communication as something that you need to have in your communication portfolio just like you have a channel for synchronous you have a policy for synchronous asynchronous you have some of these water cooler style interactions you know we have connections cafe that brings people together again in a sort of a planned manner but orchestrated manner is the right word uh, to use for that but for bursty communication what leaders need to do is first recognize there is a place for it some people may be overly interested in asynchronous uh, communication and not want to be part of anything that resembles a meeting because they just had such terrible experiences in the past right but the idea is to first sensitize people that bursty communication is useful uh, get on to a short call do a, a quick meeting but let it not be something that goes on for a very long time so set some guard rails but encourage your team to sort of talk to each other hear each other because bursty communication is also about getting that uh, that auditory and that body language uh, sensations going where you are picking up uh, what the other person is saying and is uh, building or responding to that uh, and so you get a lot of benefits of uh, both asynchronous and synchronous uh, in that uh, moment so one is sensitizing your team understanding the relevance of it yourself and the second one is modeling it uh, you are when you are pulling people into a Uh, of what looks like a bursty communication you realize it's different from your meeting it doesn't have to have a clear agenda uh, it can just have a purpose and once that purpose is met you can quickly disband so uh, i think what leaders will need to do is to understand uh, what the boundaries are what the benefits are and so that uh, their team isn't confused because so far you've been telling people like you have to have meetings or someone else is telling people about how asynchronous is so great and now suddenly you are doing something which is neither in this bucket nor in that bucket uh, and so uh, leaders will have to be a little watchful about how they uh, bring this to their uh, teams and this might need a maybe a more 
uh, a formal asynchronous meeting than a bursty meeting but the bursty uh, ones that you run you can model the best uh, practices there right i think what i you know like about this is the way they have sort of broken down this monolithic nature of uh, you know way of working that people sort of assume i'm either asynchronous or i am synchronous i'm pro for this or you know against that uh, but think of it as you know horses for courses right uh, what is exactly the kind of objective that you are you know trying to achieve and for that objective what do you need if that is what works best then make that happen and for that you don't need to take a you know pro work from office against work from office kind of a stance it's more about figuring it out at the you know second and third level so that's that's what i just loved about it going back to the you know cricket example that we started with would you think this is like the drinks break and the time when you know in a test match when players go back to the dressing room and the coach and manager can now again they are all available for ideas and and you know to talk about what should be done next is that what we are talking about in fact i would uh, probably disagree a little bit and say that there those are still sort of planned moments right, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's when you know uh your a wicket has just fallen and you're now sensing the kill and you have the think tank that comes together you have a captain at mid on and you have a your wicket keeper who just runs down and your bowler and you're just trying to figure out how to wipe off the tail uh, so that's probably an example of bursty communication uh, you don't have to set out a meeting invite for that nor do you have to use slack for it you just you know the moment is appropriate for that little huddle it doesn't have to involve all 11 people as well um it's just that little thing you're grasping at opportunity at that moment uh, and then you go back and you execute i think that's for me a, a closer example of how right. the, the you know the, the ball in your hand can be used to illustrate right. that's where thing. somebody will come in and say <laughs> main dalega and then the rest will be history <laughs> <laughs> on on that note ramanan thanks a lot for this quick burst on bursty communication thank you thanks arish If you like this, we know you care about your and your team's future relevance. You can find us and you now click on the subscribe button on YouTube, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. There are two ways to enter the insider group of friends of CTQ: a Telegram channel where you'll get daily tidbits that help you think about future relevance. and our weekly email newsletter called the up leveler we got some fabulous testimonials from our subscribers we share special discount codes for ctq compounds and exclusive invitations to our events on both these channels just go to choose to think.com that is think with a q and you'll find all the links to subscribe you owe it to yourself